over the last year I've gotten really jazzed about how I work and the different tools I use and I want to make this quick video to share it. So first off I'm going to share Raycast. This is a tool I used in place of Spotlight. It gives you access to all the apps you use but there's a ton more you can do with different Raycast extensions. It's a beautifully designed app. It takes some time to get used to, it gets some time to get warmed up, but once you're in it, it really changes your workflow. Another tool that I use a lot is Whisperflow, and I use that to dictate to my computer. It lives down here at the bottom of your screen, and it makes it really easy to dictate. I'm going to share a couple examples about how I use these tools, and hopefully it's helpful. So first up, the easiest way to get started with Raycast is the clipboard history. I feel like that was one of the reasons I initially installed it a couple years ago. It's a keyboard shortcut. and Basically, instead of hitting command paste, I hit command shift V and it pulls up all of the things in my clipboard history. I can also search through these and see any time I mention a specific word. And this makes it really easy. And when you want to paste something, you can just put it in inside any text box. The other reason I use Raycast a ton is for snippets. Snippets are basically what you'd think of as text expander. You can either replace text. So in my instance, if I do two dashes, it always turns it into an M dash, or if I start writing, a couple letters it'll paste in my address or my phone number things like that but what i find easiest and what i love about raycast is it's all through search so i actually don't really need to remember too many shortcuts i just need to remember the raycast shortcut and a couple other ones that i use really frequently so for me my snippets is command pulls up my snippets and again you can search through these to paste in anything so for example here i've got the reflection app hex code i use that a whole bunch i'm always sharing the link for reflection app so i got the download link in here and that makes it really easy so i just type in download hit enter and the other tool I use a lot is voice, I mentioned, so Whisperflow. It works really well in tandem with Raycast. Let me give you an example of that. You don't need to open anything with Whisper. The way I initiate it is I just hold down the function key. So let's think of a good example here. I'm going to open up Asana. This is the task manager I use. Here's a feature request we recently got in for Reflection App. I'll dictate to this by holding down the function key. I think it's a great idea, and instead of it living in the entry, maybe it can live as a guide. Instead of generating a prompt, maybe we can generate a guide for the user based on what they're experiencing and feeling in that moment. I release the function key, and it pastes in the text. Now, Apple has a native text-to-speech option, but this is so much better because it uses AI to clean up the text, and it uses the context around it. And if I go in, let's say I said a name here. I didn't, in this example, let's say I said someone's name, and I went in and I edited how that name was typed. Whisperflow will remember that and go in and save that to its memory. So little small things like that is what I love about it. It's really out of sight, out of mind, but it's just really thoughtful in how it's designed. Now a lot of times I'll ramble. This is where Raycast and Whisperflow work really well together. I'll highlight this text and I've got a quick action where I do command shift period and my quick action grabs any text that's highlighted and it makes it clean and concise. I just hit enter and it replaces my text. I've got a kind of couple things I wanted to share in this video, so let's see. Okay, another cool thing about Raycast, and this is a really simple one, but again, another good way to get started. Our team is fully remote. We've got people on the East Coast in the US, people in Europe, so I want to say 4 p.m. in Amsterdam in New York City. And then it'll give me the time in the different time zone. So that makes it really nice. The other thing that Raycast recently added is AI deeply integrated into everything. So while I can type in anything to search here, like apps or playing a next song or really any way to manage my computer, I can also just type in a question here. Give me a good journaling prompt to start my day. And I hit tab and it's going to ask AI through the integration here. And you can ask a follow-up question. You can also open up the response in the AI chat. Raycast has a dedicated AI chat. I'm going to share that in a little bit. Another cool thing is window management. So in this example, let's say I want to have this on the left and I want to have this on the right. You can do some quick stuff. That's really easy. And another cool thing, let's say you have a YouTube video you're watching and you want to get a little bit more out of it. I want to pause this quick and I can just say summarize YouTube video. A lot of these extensions are native to Raycast, but there's also third party extensions. So there's really a pretty big library. And this just summarizes the video. It can happen while you're watching, but you can have that up so you can read it while you're in there. And you can also ask follow-up questions from it. And in the other example, here's a blog post we recently wrote about how we've integrated a lot of the latest from Google into Reflection App. And I'm gonna ask a question here. Is Vertex AI for Firebase a secure tool? For example,
and then it talks about how in the article we mentioned how we use Firebase App Check and a couple different tools alongside it. Okay, let's get a little bit deeper into AI and Raycast. Raycast and I has a keyboard shortcut and it brings up this window. And in here I've got these past conversations. So it looks like a standard tool you'd use like ChatGPT or Claude. What's cool about Raycast and why I decided to go for it personally and why I replaced using ChatGPT and Claude on my computer is because I can really easily switch models. For me, that was really cool. So I have access to the latest from Claude. I have the access to the latest from Google and the latest from ChatGPT, but I only have to pay one subscription. So that's handy. And I often switch them. I feel like sometimes the responses are better from Gemini or for text-based things. I really like Claude. For reasoning, I really like OpenAI. So I swap between between them and I have all these different presets here so I've got a task manager or UI expert someone helps me with my investor updates business coaches I've got different models that I use and those are called presets and each of the presets have different settings so I have system instructions and you can add in different AI extensions we'll talk a little bit more about that later I did create a UI UX expert and I like to share screenshots with it sometimes when I'm really stuck on something so it's not perfect, but it gives me an alternative perspective to think about something. So I've got these two different designs I was thinking about. This is part of the onboarding screen and it gives you personalized prompts for your first journal entry. And I created two different options, option A and option B. And let's say I didn't know which one to go with. So I'm gonna hit command shift two. This takes a screenshot and puts it in any open Raycast window I already have. And now I'm gonna ask it a question. I've got option A on the left, option B on the right. Which one do you think is a better onboarding experience for the user. All right, so option A versus option B, quick take, option A is the clear winner, and it goes through all the different reasons why. I've got it set up like this, where it gives me the quick take, what works, fix this, priority actions, and then the build kill decision. That's built into my prompt here. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share a sneak peek of something that we just started exploring. I have to thank developer at Reflection, Brian, who helped me with this last night, but I really wanted to get my Asana into Raycast. So Raycast has MCP support, and MCPs are like AI agents speaking with different AI agents. And so I wanted to engage with Asana instead of just pasting in some of my recent to-dos into here. Here is a chat I have where I'm using Raycast's own LLM as an option, and it interacts with my Asana. I've got Asana here as an MCP, also Google Calendar, but we're going to go too deep into that today. Basically, I can create a task and manage my Asana tasks through here. Create a task in Reflection Marketing Project that says, create a video about Raycast MCPs and how I use it with Asana. Assign it to me and have it due today. It confirms the information and then it gives me the op option to approve it. And here's the task, it just popped up here. Break this task down into smaller pieces. So everything I would need to create a video and then add them all as subtasks. So it decided on itself, research content, write script, record video, edit video, and it suggests them all as subtasks and I can confirm all. Here are the subtasks being created for me in Asana and assign all the subtasks to me and set due dates each one day after the other, just starting with today. Nineteenth, twentieth, cool, pretty insane. Basically, I can interact with my Asana and I can set tasks as complete, move them around. That's all through the MCP that we have built in here. Okay, that's it for Raycast. I know it's a lot of information. I was hoping to make a two minute video. I made a 10 minute video. This is a little bit about how I use some of these tools. Hopefully it was helpful and yeah. If you'd like to see more of these or specific questions, just let me know. Thanks.